Well, hello YouTube and welcome back to the Holtz Mitchell channel and another uh, tool review. Today we're going to be looking at the DeWalt WS535. This is a high point gear drive saw, so it's not a true worm gear. A true worm gear, you wouldn't be able to rotate the blade. I've had one of these before and it was stolen in the burglary of this place here last year, so today is a replacement and today we're going to be cutting down these four inch thick beams. There's another several down here, the two of them that are uh, four inches thick and then two that are almost five inches thick. So we'll be maxing this saw out. Um, I'm not going to have time to do the, the appropriate run in. Normally what you do with these uh, to run them in is you put the blade on them and uh, plug them in and then set them and let them run for about 30 minutes to break in the bearings. So unfortunately I don't have time for that today. I'm a little bit on a tight schedule. I got to get these beams into storage and uh, so we're running a little short of time. So we're going to unbox this and uh, take a look inside, see what all's in it. I'll bring you in a little closer for that. Um, Got my trusty dusty Swiss Army knife here, so let me bring the camera around and we'll see what all is inside. Like I say, this is brand new. I uh, bought it off eBay. I forget what I paid for it, but I paid a whole lot less for this one than I did the original one way back when. Uh, I bought one of these when they first came on the market and they were back then around 300 bucks. They were quite spendy. Uh, I think I gave around 180 for this, including shipping, so something like that. So anyway, let me bring the camera around and uh, we'll take a closer look. So as you can see, it's pretty well packed. They got uh, shrink wrap all over this thing. Let me just... Cut through all the tape here. I'm going to try and keep this in frame as best as I can. The beam doesn't bounce out from underneath me here. Sorry about that. My fat arms in the view here. Okay. I got some drippage here I gotta contend with. Okay, there's no need for additional oil according to this little poop sheet here, so that's good to know. Uh, we'll lay this over here. So this is the view we have from top. So let's pull out what we have here. This as you can see, it's not being very cooperative. Well, I got a instruction manual, all that down here in the side. Lay that aside too. Oops, there goes the pocket knife. Ah, this is the uh, wrench for the uh, saw blade in the arbor. Now we're getting to the goodies. Okay, we've got a saw, and down here in the bottom of the box is the, brain, the blade, original DeWalt, although DeWalt doesn't actually make this. Now this is a diamond center, which means when you mount it up it doesn't slip. So there should be a break on this. If I remember right, to okay, is this it right here? Okay, there's a button right here, and I think this is the break, and it is. And so, a saw blade usually. Uh, loosens in the direction it cuts. So this is going to be a left-hand thread. 
So I'm turning it clockwise to get it to loosen, so that means it's a left hand thread. Sorry if I might seem a little jittery here. I'm all coffeeed up. I normally don't drink coffee. But under the circumstances, I gotta get going here in the mornings and tea is a little too. So then we got, so anyway, here we got our, our blade mounted. As you can see, the diamond hole here. And then uh, this flange nut goes on top of there and of course now you got to remember lefty tighty let me turn this around here so you guys can get a better view of course then once you start getting close to the end you got to tighten it up wrench and tight we are so what other features do we have here? Here's one for hanging the, this is a hanger, so you can hang the saw on a stud or on the wall or on your belt. Got depth adjustment. This is built very stout, I must say. The back here is almost a quarter inch thick. It's about five millimeters actually. Um, we have an aluminum plate here. The rest of the housing is all aluminum. On my old one, this housing was still plastic, but the front end of it was um, was metal. Even the blade housing is metal. This pot metal. I don't know if it's uh, an injected molded zinc or what it is. Um, we have a nice scale along here. A ruler in quarter inch increments from zero here to, to seven and three quarters. Here's some slots for guides. And uh, here's the uh, bevel adjustment up to 45 degrees. Now, you got a, a cut follower here. This one is for zero degrees for when the saw is vertical and this one's for at 45. So that way you can follow, if you're cutting after a line you just follow this and then you got, you know, you follow this one on the straight up and down and this one on the 45. So there's the features of our saw. Let's uh, drop her down to maximum cut depth. And here's a, another nice feature that they have from zero to two and looks like three eighths. Um, let's see, no, that's two and a half, two and three quarters. So two and three quarters cut depth. Let's measure that real quick. Of course, I'm in metric still. So there's about 60, 60 millimeters of cut depth. So yeah, that's a little over, a little over two inches. Two inches would be 50. Now on the old saw, they had a deal where you could stick the wrench in. I'm looking for that and I don't see it anywhere. There was a slot here in the handle and you could insert the wrench and you always had it handy so that if you ever had to change a blade on the spot you didn't have to go looking for your wrench. So that's the only thumbs down I can give this saw so far. So, now it's time to plug this sucker in and see how she cuts.
Well, YouTube, that concludes today's little review. I realize it's a little bit short and sweet. Uh, the blade that was supplied with this, as you can see, of course, like I mentioned before, a true worm gear, worm gear saw you wouldn't be able to turn. Uh, this blade is supplied by DeWalt called Construction. So it's a, uh, a K-tooth configuration uh, with an anti-kickback feature on the blade um, where it has a heel behind the uh, cutter of the tooth. So it uh, prevents some kickback uh, as you're guiding the saw into the wood. Um, so, in essence, this is just nothing, you know, it's, it's a basic saw. There's really not a whole lot of features to it. My only regret is that there's no fence that went along with the, uh, with the, with the tool itself. Would have been nice to have one, but again, not really. Um, this is something you can add on later or make your own. Uh, I'm probably going to make my own later. Um, somewhere down the line when I get to using the saw a little more. But anyway, that's today's conclusion oops, of the seven and a quarter inch high point gear drive saw from DeWalt, the DS, DWS 535. So if there's, oh, it says on here magnesium. So anyway, I hope you guys uh, got a little something out of this uh, as far as your decision-making capabilities go for buying tools. Um, I realize this is just a short video. There's, uh, you know, it's really not much to a skill saw as such. I mean, I'm using this, this term skill saw as, as a general generic term for one of these handheld circular saws in the seven, you know, in the smaller, in the smaller diameter range. So anyway, that concludes today's uh, review of the saw. Uh, I'd say overall it performed adequately. Uh, well, much to my satisfaction, it, it delivers a nice clean cut. And you may have seen that, um, like right here. This is, of course, old growth dug fir from the coast. Um, this tree was cut in uh, the late 1800s, early 1900s and left lay. The sap rotted away and uh, it was flown to the landing. The sawyers had to buck it up and get it out of the way so they flew it to the landing. Unfortunately it wasn't good enough for the mill but I was able to get some good stuff out of it so I decided to salvage these big timbers and get some nice vertical grain in the true sense of the word. This is a rift cut by the way where the grain all goes straight up and down through the width of the board. Um, but anyway this is old growth dug fir, um, approximately 150 years old uh, cut or aged 150 years. Uh, the tree itself is probably neighborhood of six to seven hundred years old when it was still alive. Um, and so this is some fairly tough wood and as you can see it delivers a fairly decent cut. So um, overall the saw performed well. Has plenty of power to go through the full depth of cut of the uh, oh, looks like two and three eighths or whatever it is. Um, yeah, two and oh yeah, two and three eighths. Yep, because uh, when I look on the scale here, it's a little distorted, so it looks like you know the one inch range is actually like closer to two on the scale here, but uh, you know it's actually quite accurate. So anyway, um, two and three eighths depth is what I was cutting, and uh, performed just fine. The blade itself doesn't show any uh, signs of abnormalities the teeth are all there held up just fine so overall for the money I'd say this is a good tool to buy um, the hundred and eighty dollars or you know I paid like a hundred and fifty some dollars and then another thirty for shipping um, so overall I'd say it's a good a good value for the for the money um, I don't see why a guy would have to go spending a thousand dollars on a festool uh, saw like this um, if you're just going to be doing these kind of cuts. Now if you're doing um, dip cuts and stuff like that then of course it becomes a whole different ball game and this saw would be not wholly unsuitable but it would be a, a more difficult endeavor let's put it that way. So overall for what it is 
good value, um, good saw, you know. Um, I'm looking forward to using this when I get to build my next house, so yeah, we'll see how it turns out. Anyway, that concludes today's tool review for the Holtz Mitchell channel. Again, this is not a, a uh, paid endorsement of the product we're showing here today. I'm just uh, showing you folks what kind of tools that I use over the years and uh, how they perform and uh, you know how they hold up. So with that, if there's any thoughts, suggestions, comments, greetings, whatever comes across your mind, by all means, put it in the comment section below. We always love to hear from the subscribers and the viewers. Even if you're not a subscriber, uh, by all means, just, you know, throw a high out there or whatever. And uh, if there's something you'd like to see on later down the line as far as the type of uh, working conditions that these tools might operate in, by all means, put it in the comment section below. Again, we're always open for, uh, for comments and such. So anyway, with that, thanks for stopping by and watching, and we'll see you again soon. <laughs>